So Winchester's kind of an interesting film, but not in the way that you want to say a film is interesting. Well, Winchester has a lot of interesting things going for it. It's got some interesting ideas. It's got some great set design. It has a great cast. It's a period piece, and it takes it seriously that it's a period piece, which I always really enjoy. So if I'm saying all these really nice things, why did I open up with that sentence that I did? And why does the thumbnail seem to indicate that this was not a very well-received movie? Well, despite its good material, it just doesn't come together for a film that's engaging and leaves a mark on you. Now, there's a couple of different things about the film that contribute to this, such as a couple of really tired cliches from horror films and ghost stories, such as the little child who gets possessed, and of course you have to have that child's mother, and it seems at the end of the film, it just doesn't know what to do with these characters. At the climax of the film, they're just sort of shoved off to the side, and we cut to them every once in a while, but it's very clear that the writers didn't really have anything for them to do after a certain point. On top of that, you then have some very ham-fisted foreshadowing that comes about in the film, like really obvious Chekhov's gun sort of thing where they show you a prop and you're like, oh, that's going to be really important later. And so to make it even more frustrating, on top of that, when it comes to the point where said object's going to be important, they flash back to how they told you how important it was going to be. I'm really tired of this. It's been done a couple of times in several films. And can we just trust the audience to understand when you do a really obvious Chekhov's gun sort of reveal of here's an interesting prop. Do we really need to flash back to when we get then obviously told that said prop is important? We already know it. Can we trust that the audience is able to remember that for 30 minutes or so that said prop is going to be important? The final thing that might contribute to this is about halfway through the film, it just stops being scary. So I went to see Winchester with one of my roommates, and afterwards we were both talking about how at basically the exact same moment, we were no longer afraid of the film. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, even if it is a horror film. It sort of leans more on the thriller aspect of sort of a psychological thriller at that point. It doesn't really lean on that very well, though. It's particularly interesting because they had done a fairly good job in the first half of the film making you feel on the edge of your seat not sure what was going to be the next thing but it seems as soon as they revealed who the big bad guy was they just didn't know how to keep making it scary or something the ghost story aspect of it was fairly interesting and the whole concept of the house was quite fascinating i those were some of the best parts of the film actually and perhaps that gets to the core of why this story doesn't work the way it's set up. It's not really a horror film, it's actually just a ghost story. And like many ghost stories, they're not always crafted. And like many ghost stories, it doesn't always have consistency that you want in a larger tale. That's why most good ghost stories are campfire tales that are quick. You know, they're not three hours long, not that this is that long, but they're, they're not featured film length because that's how you most easily create an interesting, scary ghost story. The film clearly shows that the filmmakers involved, who are two brothers that wrote and produced and directed, and one of them even scored the film, they clearly have a lot of skill, but they really need to refine their process and figure out exactly what they want to do with the story, I think. It seems like in some ways they were very afraid to take risks with the story and with the common tropes of horror. Like how I mentioned earlier, they still have the innocent child who can be taken over by the ghosts. Most of the horror beats were met and your expectations are pretty much exactly met if not underwhelmed, except for in one or two cases. As I said though, what makes this film really interesting is that the acting is really good, the set design is fantastic. I even actually saw a photo of the actual building, 
And it was pretty amazing how close it was. I saw that and I was like, oh, that looks almost exactly like what we saw of the house. It also has several supporting characters who are really funny or interesting. And they don't feel like they're just thrown in there for the most part. There's a couple, but the main supporting cast seems very purposeful and very interesting. And I almost would have rather have seen a little bit more of them. But... Maybe that would have made them not as interesting. And so that goes back to what I said at the beginning. It has a lot going for it, yet it just doesn't pull together into a film that you would really want to see again. It's kind of like the house that it's based on. It looks complex and grand and interesting from the outside, and but when you get inside it and you look around a little closely, maybe you realize it's not complex, it's just poorly planned. However, it's unfortunate for this film the way that Rotten Tomatoes works. For its scale, it's very much a yay or nay scale, which has resulted in it having a very low Rotten Tomato score. Do I think it deserves that low of a score? No, I thought it was a pretty mediocre movie, but when you have to rate a movie up or down, most people are going to rate it down, which is going to contribute to that rating. I personally would say that it's much closer to IMDb's, I believe it's 5.5 around the time that I'm recording this. However, it's very true that number reviews just don't really work, and that's not something I want to be doing on this. So, we're going to have a different sort of scale of how I rate movies. I'm going to rate it based off of its viewability, and so... I give this film a viewability rating of, if you enjoy ghost stories, and that's a big if, then I would say rent this film. Very cheaply, maybe at a red box or something. Hey everyone, I hope that you enjoyed my first review, and I want to know what you think about Winchester. I've told you what I've thought, but in the comments, if you've had a chance to see it, why don't you tell me what you thought, and we could talk about that. because. I find it very interesting and I'd like to know what other people think. If there was anyone that really liked it, I'd love to hear from you. I've got a lot of films I want to review on this channel. I want to get to every single film that comes out in 2018. And so Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I'll be reviewing movies that have come out this year. And I'm going to be trying to focus on, you know, the more recent ones, of course. And then on Tuesdays, I plan to watch sort of internet distribution movies, so like Netflix originals, Hulu originals, I think that'll be really fun. And then on Thursdays, I'm gonna review retro movies, you know, sort of a throwback Thursday thing, and so we're gonna look at movies from the past. If there's a film that you would really like me to review, why don't you leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. Also, remember that roommate that I mentioned earlier in the film? Well, her name's Claire, and she has a YouTube channel of her own, which I'll be linking here at the end of this video. She talks about some movies and TV shows as well, so you might enjoy her work. Who knows, maybe we'll collaborate one day on a video. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe so that you can keep up with all our videos, and give it a like so that I know that you're enjoying it, and that would really help grow this channel. See you in the next video.